Hi, welcome to this CacheCube tutorial. This will be the first of a series. We're going to use a tool called CacheCube Playground to easily create Bitcoin Cash smart contracts right from the browser. So if you go to the CacheCube Playground website, this is what you'll see. On the left hand side, a code editor with an example smart contract. And on the right hand side, a contract view with input fields to put in the contract parameters. And then a drop down menu to select either mainnet or testnet. We will be uh, using testnet to test this smart contract, so you don't need real Bitcoin Cash or need to test with uh, real money. And then finally, there's a create button. We'll go over this contract structure step by step, so you will learn how to write, write your own Bitcoin Cash smart contracts. The first thing to note is that Cash Crypt, or the structure of CashCrypt contract is inspired by Ethereum Solidity language. Um, so if you already know Solidity, the structure will be quite familiar. On the first line, the version of CashCrypt is specified. So in this tutorial, we'll be using version 6.5. If you watch this tutorial uh, later, your version might be newer. Then we write contract with the name of the contract. So this contract is called transfer with timeout. We can rename this contract if you want to test uh, and recompile. And you'll see our contract is now named test. In between brackets, we see the contract parameters. So this contract takes three parameters. And each time, first the type is specified and then the name. So the first uh, contract parameter is a public key, uh, shortened to pub key, called sender. The second is also a pub key, called recipient. And the third is an integer. Uh, short into int called timeout. Um, this is just a number. So you can fill in those three parameters on the right hand side to create your smart contracts. This is uh, already a bit more complex than necessary. So we will get rid of the second spending function. So we can also get rid of the first and third parameter. So we are only left with a public key recipient. We then press compile again. So we only need to fill in one argument to create our contract. And this argument uh, we will get from the wallet view. So if we press this arrow button, we will be taken to the wallet view where we can create or delete wallets. So one wallet is created by default, but if we, have to, if we press the plus button, a new wallet will be created and we can delete this by pressing the minus button. Um, we can rename our wallet to recipient. And a wallet is just a public private key pair. So the public key is listed here. And then there's some additional information. Uh, next, under the public key on, in hexadecimal is the public key hash. So a hash of the public key also in hexadecimals. Of course, the hash is shorter than the actual public key. And then last, we have the testnet address. The testnet address always starts with BCH test. Um, and because it is a pay to public key hash address, starts with a Q. So actually this testnet address is nothing else than a fancy encoding of the public key hash. But remember, for this contract, we only needed a public key of the recipient. Um, so we'll copy this public key in hexadecimals. We'll switch back to the contract view. We will paste in this public key, uh, select testnet and create our smart contract. So this is the address for our smart contract. Note that it does not start with a Q, it starts with a P. That is because it's a smart contract address. Uh, and it's also called the pay to script hash address, meaning this, uh, this address is just a hash of our script, our test smart contract with this contract parameter. So um, the address is a unique identifier. And the contract already holds a balance. This is because I funded the example contract with 10,000 testnet satoshis um, by sending it to this address. You can also do that by going to a, a testnet faucet and uh, setting up Electron Cash with testnet. And then you can fund uh, example contracts to play around with them in the CashCrypt playground. Here is some more information on the uh, smart contract. So the smart contract is 35 bytes in size and only one opcode big. Then if we take a look at the bottom half, we will see, uh, we see uh, the spending functions. 
to actually spend from this smart contract to actually spend these 10,000 testnet satoshis. So um, the spending function is called transfer, as you can see on the left hand side. So the spending functions are always specified in the body of the contract class. Um, so this transfer function takes one argument with a new type, type called signature, and it is called recipient sig. So you already notice that it somehow relates to the public key recipient. And indeed, if you watch, uh, if you look closely at this function, you'll see it is just one require statement, a require statement with a sex check. So a signature check, which um, requires this to evaluate the true. So the recipient public key must relate to the uh, recipient sig, or in other words, the signature must be from the private key associated with this public key. And this is the most simple, um, similar to the most simple type of transaction you can do. Um, so now we have to fill in this argument, so we have to actually provide this recipient sig. In CacheScript Playground, this is pretty easy. You can just select from the drop down menu which wallet you want to sign a transaction with. So we will select the recipient wallet, which is the same one as we used for the public key. And then we can provide, once we have unlocked um, the money from our smart contract, we can provide any number of outputs. We will provide just one, and we will um, provide a new address, which we will create in the wallet view. So we will copy paste this testnet address, copy paste. Um, of course, if you would sign this transaction with an other wallet, like wallet2, the transaction would be invalid and rejected by the network rules, because the signature of wallet2 does not match this public key, and our smart contract requires that the signature check uh, returns true. So now, what amount can we send? Well, we unlock 10,000 satoshis, but we also have to pay for the miner fee. Um, so if we take uh, liberally a fee of 250 satoshis, we can send 9,750 um, satoshis to this address. And we'll press send and see if the transaction goes through. Um, we have to wait a second, then we should get a notification. This says transaction was rejected by the network rules, of course, because we still selected wallet2. We have to select the wallet uh, of the recipient, so the, the actual signature matches the public key. So this was a good mistake to make. Then we'll try again by pressing send. And if you wait one second, we'll get another notification, hopefully. Indeed, which says transaction successfully sent with a link to the testnet block explorer and our uh, unique transaction ID. Um, so our first smart contract transaction went through. Um, I think that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for checking it out and uh, hope to see you next time. Bye.